Hello and welcome to a new video. This is the second part of my series about building a custom LEGO 12 volt steam engine. And in this part, I'm going to be detailing all the parts that I, uh, that I acquired for this project. Um, so yeah, the first part was just an intro and this, this, the second part is gonna be the first part where I really start to go in depth into uh, all of the aspects of this project. So yeah, let's get right into it. Um, this box I'm gonna save till the end because it has all of the rare parts in it and I wanna spend a lot of time on that. So I'll get the other parts out of the way first. Um, as you can see, I've kind of bagged everything on the table. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just organized by the type of uh, brick. And I've also, as you can see, I've attached similar bricks or the same bricks together. So I know it's hard to see, but in this bag, like you can see all the black bricks. These are like the one by two bricks. Um, yeah, I've got some bricks with technicals. You can see that in there as well. Um, so yeah, just a bunch of standard black bricks. Here I have the standard red bricks. These I need for the undercarriage of the train, so the wheelbases and or the, the bogies of the engine. These are the plates. These one, these I need for like the base of the train and then the roof and the yeah the tender, some parts in the boiler. And again, I've stacked all the similar pieces together here. These are some uh, like two by six, two by eight plates, and then I think I've yeah, I got a couple of two by tens as well. Oh, this bag also has the, you can see these ones with the technicals. These are for the main engine uh, base plate and for, or for the, the bogey plates to attach to. Here are, here are the smaller like one by three, um, one by four, or yeah, one by three, one by four, two by three and two by four plates in both black and red. Here you can say I have a bunch of the smaller bricks. So I've stacked these up like in different ways, but this big like block here is one by two plates. I've got two by two plates, again, in both black and red. I've got like the one by one round bricks. Uh, I've got some one by two tiles, two by two tiles, one by one clips with the thin, uh, thin O-rings. I have one by six, and, uh, well, yeah, just one by six and then some one by eight plates as well, both black and red, and then two one by eight tiles. Here I just put together all of my slopes, um, black and red. These are all types of slopes. I got everything from like one by one by two inverted slopes to like three by four slopes that I will probably end up using for the roof. And then the last of these bags is just some miscellaneous parts. So I've got like the round bricks and round plates. I've got turntables, which I need for the bogies. Um, I've got like this hinge piece that I might use for the boiler, some technique pieces and ladders. So yeah, now I'm gonna move to the, um, the smaller box. This one has all the rare parts in it. So I'm gonna zoom in a little. And this one, I'm gonna take a lot of time on. This is where most of the money went for this project. A bunch of the other, like all those bags are just pretty common pieces. So I was able to source most, most of those from domestic sellers. Um, but this one, this box, I really had to get some parts from Europe for. So I'll open this box. So as you can see, there's some pretty expensive parts in here. So I'll go through each one kind of in order or as I pull them out of the box. Um, these are the hose pieces. These are originals from 7750. Um, yeah, I think they're what, 12.6 studs long if I remember correctly. These ones are just meant for boiler decorations and they're on these plates, which are actually pretty rare. They're one by two plates with um, bar attachments that have round, uh, round ends and mid attachments. These are, these are much rarer than the common ones which have flat ends and low attachments. A little bit of 80s trivia for those who don't know. Um, so yeah, these are the hoses. I've also got some non-rare parts in here as well. These are just one by one plates. Um, for the lights. I've got a couple of cables. Oops, just dropped a buffer. I cut these. Uh, I, I, special, I especially cut these and I put like my own connectors on them because I didn't, these connectors are actually more expensive. So, I, and I already have some of these. So I wanted to go with, I wanted to stick with these for most of them. Uh, I have two ones that are the same length with uh, these two pin connectors on one side and then and then two one pin connectors, connectors on the other and then i've got a longer cable this one will go from the tender to the engine what else i've got three of these two by four bricks with small red wheel sets these are relatively common these are only like a buck and a half to two bucks a piece those will go in the wheelbase of the engine 
I've got, I'll save some of the rare, the rarest bits for last. I've got two weight bricks. These are not in great condition. You can see all the scratches on them. I might replace them um, if they're in a place that, if they're in a place in a tenor that you can see the scratches pretty obviously. So I might end up replacing those. I have three light bricks. These are the later types with the diffuser lenses um, and three plug holes. I'm planning to use one in the tender and then two in the engine. One will light up the two bottom lights and one will light up the boiler light. That's why I also have three cables. I have two black doors. Um, yeah, pretty standard train doors, no stickers or anything. And then now we're starting to get into some of their rarer and more expensive pieces. I have two steam cylinders. Uh, yeah, pretty standard for 12 volt steam engines, so I wanted to include them in uh, in this build. These are the older type with the with no interior grooves on them. I have two black light prism holders with light prisms installed. One again, one of these will go in the tender, and then the other one will go in the bottom of the engine. And then what else? I've got magnets, four magnets, um, and then four magnet holders. Let me get those. Yep, also pretty standard stuff for any 12 volt train. And yeah, these are some of the most expensive pieces that I had to buy. These two bricks I already have, but these are exclusive, believed to be exclusive to 7750, except uh, early runs of 7740 may have included these. Anyways, these are one by two connecting, one by two bricks with cable, cable cutouts. Um, yeah, these are very rare. I was able to get these for about five bucks a piece, but th that's an uncommon price for listings like this. You normally find them for about $10 each. Um, we'll move to Windows next. No, in my opinion, no 12 volt steam engine is complete without the extremely expensive black windows. So here are four of the very rare one by two by two black windows with glass. Um, yeah, these are about 10 bucks each and they were only in four sets. So they were in 7810 and then the three 12 volt steam engines, 7727, 7730 and 7750. Uh, so I had to buy four of them um, or I chose to buy four of them rather. So yeah, they're all in pretty good condition and they all have their glass. And the other windows, the very rare one by one by two black windows. So I can get the camera to focus. These do not have glass only produced in two sets ever, 7730, 7750. These are about $30 a piece for such small windows. I find that crazy, but again, they're 40, what, for anywhere from 42 to 44 years old at this point. I have four red buffers. Uh, again, pretty rare, only produced 7730, 7727, 750, and 7815. Um, I need four because two of them are going to go in the engine, two in the tender. And then some of the last rarest pieces in the collection of parts that I bought. Here are four of the red wheel sets. These were only produced in 7750 and one service, uh, two service packs, excuse me, one in 1981 and 1987. These are pretty rare. These are about $20 each. Um, I intend to use all four of them in the wheelbase of the engine. Next we have two bogey plates. These are, of course, the ones with the seven millimeter pin version, um, exclusive to 7750. These are also about $20 a piece. Very rare to find. Um, yeah, there are not many sellers on BrickLink that have these, so I had to get these, I believe, from a seller in uh, Germany. And last, but certainly not least, is the red 12 volt motor. So this part has an interesting story behind it. Um, I've repaired if I remember, I repaired, I think I've repaired two of my 12 volt motors. I have, so I currently have four red motors. This is the fourth. I've repaired two of them before and I had extra parts because one time a seller sent me a extra motor, or one time a seller sent me a motor that was not working and they ended up replacing it for free and letting me keep the original broken one, which was very kind of them. Um, I ended up opening that motor, discovering, I discovered it had a fried commutator. Um, so it's basically not repairable. Um, so it was just sitting as parts for a long time, and I prioritized the other three motors that are currently in 7727, so 7727, 7730, 7750, of course. Um, and this one has just been kind of laying off to the side. It has, the case is not very, like the housing is not very 
not in great condition, which is why I don't, haven't used it. You can see these weird like marks on the side um, and then discoloration on the bottom as well. Um, and it's also got some like cuts on the around the pinholes as well, if you can see those. So yeah, this was just laying as spare. And for this project, I was like, I could either spend 150 bucks and get myself a new red motor, or I can see if I can repair the one that I already have, even if it might not be in as good condition. So I chose to repair the one that I had. Um, and I'll show some pictures of that on the screen. The process that I went through was essentially I had a black motor that I knew was working, uh, but it wasn't in great external condition. So I just opened that up. It was a type three black motor. Um, so this is actually like a hybrid motor. It's, it's a type one shell um, dated, what, 40, 40 zero, 40 with 40th week in 1980. I opened the black motor, I took all the parts out, and then I took everything out of this red motor shell. I cleaned all the parts, I kind of assembled the new, new internals with the red, uh, of course, the red wheels. You need to switch out the axles. Uh, you need to switch out the wheels and the axles for red wheels. And then I cleaned everything, put it back in the red shell, and I, of course, like re-lubricated it and glued it back together, and it's working great. I tested it already. Um, and then I also had to buy some red middle wheels for it. So yeah, that was my story of how I basically saved myself 150 bucks for uh, this red motor. And yeah, it's working great. And I think that's about it for the parts that I have for this project. Let me just put all the rear parts back on the screen. I make for a nice thumbnail, or maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> in total, I think this cost me about $450, if I remember right, because I did have to pay for a lot of shipping. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about all these parts. These are some, some of these parts are like extremely rare, only appeared in one, two sets, um, and I'm ready to use them to build my steam engine. I don't think I need any, or any more orders at this point. Um, so yeah, these are all the rare parts that I've got. But I guess that sums up this video. And the next part of the series is going to be about comparing some, Is it so it's gonna be about inspiration from other steam engines. So I'm gonna be looking at the official LEGO steam engines, of which I have all three, 7727, 7730, 7750. And then also looking at some uh, real world steam engines, uh, real, like real German steam engines that I can use as inspiration for my creation. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.